called Xenos, the first book in the Eisenhorn series, and my first experience with the Warhammer 40k universe. And I, audience, I have a confession to make to you. A confession slash apology. One of the reasons it's taken me so long to get into Warhammer 40k, aside from wanting to finish Malazan and get through that first, was I had rock bottom, rock bottom, rock, rock bottom expectations for what this book and world was going to be like. I just kind of assumed, oh, it's a popular board game tabletop RPG thing. Therefore, the books are gonna be trying to cash in on a popular thing and they're not gonna be great. I thought maybe at best I'd get lower tier of the Star Wars books that have been written. I was wrong. I was so so wrong. Not only is Xenos good, it's borderline great. Maybe it is just great. This was such a pleasant surprise and a just remarkably well fleshed out and realized reading experience for the readers. Let's get into what exactly this book is. And I, before I pick this up, knew nothing about Warhammer 40k, to be perfectly honest. I saw the ac action figurines for the game, and I had had some experience with like a Total War adaptation of Warhammer 40k. That's all. It's to the point where I thought Eisenhorn, the Eisenhorn trilogy, which people kept telling me about, is gonna be the name of the author. No. It's the name of the character. The author's Dan Abbott. I mean, he did a really good job. But what exactly is Xenos about? Amazingly to me, it's actually like a detective mystery story, which I did not expect. I thought everything Warhammer 40K, based off what I've seen, is going to be like epic war stuff, which it is a bit. But no, this is much more of following someone trying to get to the bottom of a mystery. And it handled not only the mystery very well, not only the atmosphere really well, but the characters were so well done. The main character you're following, Eisenhorn himself, is not like your typical, oh, I'm trying to solve a mystery Sherlock type. To me, he actually kind of struck me much more like Lieutenant Dokes from Dexter. Surprise, mother goblin! Maybe not quite that intense, but he's pretty intense. And the structure of this story, the way the mystery unfurls, the depth and relationships of the characters, the prose, all of it are far above just average or good. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and say the pros were like the perfect balance of what I typically look for actually in a fantasy sci-fi book. Extremely enjoyable and having a lot of beauty in the words without feeling try hard or like overly poetic. And that balance lended itself to making this atmosphere come to life. I have very rarely felt as immersed in the feelings the characters are experienced, the tensions of rooms as Xenos brought to the table. Now, surprisingly, I actually wouldn't say this is grimdark. I just assumed everything Warhammer 40k was going to be in the grimdark territory, but I would just say this is more like very adult and gritty. There's pretty heavy theming throughout the book as well about like institutions, positions within them, questioning authority. If you're a really integral part of this system, but then you begin questioning it, how do you still fulfill your duties? There's a lot of nuance in that angle as well. And I actually found myself like after I put down this book thinking about like, oh, if I was in this or that character's shoes, what would I have been doing? You know, what would have resulted in me believing this way? I wish I had read this before I wrote my novella, not because I don't think it would have changed anything drastic, but it just actually has like a lot of parallels to what I was going for as well. So that was kind of neat for me. And maybe most importantly of all for a lot of you, it was just a very fun read because the pacing never dragged, the structure is there. And especially if you're into these kind of like badass characters going on in like space adventures with like war and violence, you're gonna really, really enjoy what this brings to the table. I expected like the best review I could give to Xenos going into it was like, oh, at least I could be like self-aware of what it is. But again, that just speaks on the prejudice I was walking into this reading experience with because yeah, it is aware of what it is, but not in like a condescending, it's not something that's very good way. This is something that transcends what I thought possible for setting place in this universe and becomes outside of the stigma of being a board game set book kind of thing on its own legs 
a sci-fi book I'm going to heavily recommend and look to as an example of how to do a lot of things right, especially dialogue. If you want to get into how to have like quippy yet like serious character defined dialogue back and forth, just flawlessly through and through, there was not a line that came out of a character's mouth that I felt was inappropriate for them to be saying. If I had to like put a criticism in here, as a reader who is new to this world, it didn't do a very good job of making me understand the broader setting of Warhammer extremely well. Ha hello, hi, hello, hi. welcome to another episode of Science Man Dan um, explains the sci-fi universe or fantasy thing. Talking about Warhammer 40k. I'm gonna explain this universe real quick. Basic thing, Warhammer 40k. You got a lot of planets, like so many more planets than I'm gonna put on this board. A lot of them. And they're all under control. From like various factions, so like that, they've got those ones, uh, the orange people got the ones over here, and then you've got like another one down here. Except they really do not like each other. They're at each other's throats, just going nuts. Conflict and war all over the place, just going ham in there. So what you got going on is there's one group amongst these fighting people that has, they got the Inquisition. And they, this faction has like a ruler who's like the supreme being. And the Inquisition makes sure that everyone falls in line within their faction with this supreme being that, that, that they get to really, really like. Um, and then occasionally, things happen. I get the impression like, yes, okay, there's humans all across the place. There's aliens, there's factions at play, lots of worlds, you know, where wars are going on, conflict but I don't really grasp much beyond what was directly relevant in this story, which could be a positive or negative. For me, I actually think it's a positive for this reading experience, but for my investment in the wider Warhammer 40K, it probably would have helped if there was a bit more fleshing out the wider setting existing in this book, but I'm not complaining because the book on its own is good enough for me to at least want to continue the Eisenhorn trilogy. But don't take that as me saying the world building's not there. No, everything that needs to be well realized for this story is so and breathes in a very rich way, especially like the political nuances that are relevant to the foreground and background to the exact setting that's going on here. Dan Abbott, I'm actually just going to be looking into this guy as an author because I love how he handled pretty much every angle to this. Ah, I'm a, I'm a Warhammer fan now, oh my god. All right, all right, all right. Some actual like criticisms here. While I've praised the character a good bit in this video, there is definitely the, the characters serve a purpose. I would think of them as very well-defined tools. They serve a purpose for a task and they're gonna fit into that slot nicely on your little pegboard wall, but don't expect like the greatest character arcs or to have your expectations super subverted by how characters are gonna play out. I still have this kind of intense anxiety regarding Warhammer. Now I'm a fan of Dan Abnett books, that's great. But how well is this universe going to continue on in other authors' hands. I'm aware I've been told by the fans to start here, so this is probably the best foot forward Warhammer 40k can put for an entry. But going deeper into Warhammer 40k, I have this like anxious feeling now of like, I don't want to see some other author come in and mess this up. So Warhammer 40k put fans, please guide me. Leave, let me know in the comments down below where to step from here. But that's the criticisms, aside from that, this is a really interesting, different story. I don't know if I've read an investigation in a setting like this with characters like this before. This stands out as something that hits different. If you're looking for an action-packed, epic space opera level mystery solving story, there's no other place I'd really point you to than to here right now. I'm giving Xenos a very solid 8.5 out of 10 several points well above where I thought this could possibly be. So Warhammer fans, I'm sorry I doubted you. I'm a Warhammer fan now. I'm joining. I guess I need to go play the games too. Anyway guys, like and subscribe if you've not already. Hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here. Look forward to a One Piece review later this week. And have a good one. Peace.